Welcome back to our channel at Soccer Zone USA. I'm DJ Diveny, and in this video, we're talking how to impress during your next tryout. One question that I get asked all the time, how do I improve or how do I help my player or my child improve their game? And the reason that we're asking that question is because they want their player to be able to make a higher level team. So in this video, we're talking about how to impress during tryouts. You've done the work, you've improved your game, now it's time to make that team. It doesn't come down to just being pretty good, you have to do some little things to stand out. So we're gonna break this video into two halves and in the first half, I'm gonna to talk to you about the five best things, general things that you can easily do to stand out and make a team. And in the second half, I'm gonna to talk to you about five little things that most players don't usually do that you can use to your advantage to give yourself even better chances. And to start this off, I'm just gonna to talk to you a little bit about my experience making a team because I was able to walk on to a Division I soccer team at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. And it's just really an interesting story that parallels some of these tips that are gonna help you make your team. So a little background about me, I'm currently a professional freestyler and I played Division I college soccer. And prior to that, I got a number of different accolades for being a top player in New Jersey. I played for a number of different club teams at pretty high levels. But when I was choosing colleges to go to, I wasn't really getting recruited and this was difficult for me. And I was really focused on my education. So in the end, I decided to go to NJIT to pursue architecture and later switch to physics. Really weird, but that's for another story. And ultimately, I got it in my head that rather than being recruited, which is the best way to go, I was going to try to walk on. Now, normally, if you go to a club team or you go to your high school team, there's a tryout and you show up, you try your best, and then you find out if you made the team. But usually with college or for pro teams, you're scouted, you're recruited, you're brought in, you're bought on a transfer fee from another club. So it's not the kind of thing where you can go to the stadium, knock on the door, and ask for a chance to try out for the team. It doesn't really work that way. But I was fortunate when I got to school at NJIT to have the chance to try out. I did not make the team because again, it wasn't an open tryout. It was just something that the school had to do. They already had a roster of 30 players and unfortunately I didn't get on. I did well, I worked really hard, I showed up, I was on time, I shook the coach's hand. I did a bunch of these little things, but they didn't quite get me onto the squad. And then when I tried out again in the spring after I begged the administration to give me another chance to make sure that the team had another designated tryout, I got onto the team. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did from these tips that helped me go from not making that team to later getting on that team. So now I'll segue into our five best things that you can do to stand out and make your team. Number one, be on time. Number one is gonna sound super, super obvious, but believe it or not, enough players don't do it. Be on time and always ready to go. Obviously, you wanna be on time for that tryout. The tryout's at three, get there at 2.30. If you need a little bit more time to assimilate to the field or get changed or whatever you need to do, get there at 2.15. Make sure you have plenty of time so that you're ready for the start of the trial. Now to show that you're ready to go from the start, go up to those coaches and introduce yourself. Wave or shake hands if you can, say hi, tell them what your name is and that you're excited for the opportunity. It doesn't have to be a lot. You don't have to you know, put too much into it. You don't want to you know, kiss up too much. You just wanna show that you're there, that you're confident enough to go and say hi and to introduce yourself and that you're ready to go from the start. Number two, this sounds really obvious as well, but believe it or not, players miss this mark. Focus on the next play, no matter what. But what most players miss is focusing on the next play. So not just hustling all the time, but making sure that no matter what happens, you're continuing to fight for the team. If you get beat one versus one, you don't throw your hands up in the air or your hands on your face or on your head. You immediately get back behind the ball and try to help your team win it back. The coach is gonna recognize that you're not wasting any time feeling sorry for yourself or getting upset with yourself, and you're maximizing that time by helping the team instead. Even if you do something really well, like you score a goal, you should celebrate with your team, have fun with it, but then when you get back to the restart, you should be dialed in and focus on that next play, continuing 
to hustle and help your team succeed even more. Number three, be efficient and effective. You might see a player like Messi or Neymar dribble through three guys and then score a nice goal and say, that's why they're so great and everyone loves them. It's nice to be flashy, but it's better to be successful all the time. So rather than trying to take on three players, look to play on one and two touch. This way, if the coach has something very tactical and specific that he wants the team to do, he can count on you to focus on executing that tactic rather than worrying about if you're gonna try a fancy flick or skill move that's gonna lose the ball. Moving on to number four, showcase your strengths. If you're a player that's really good at winning balls in the air and scoring headers, then you should make sure that during your trial you have an opportunity to showcase that ability and maximize those opportunities. If at the same time you're not very good at dribbling or beating players one-on-one, -on -one, then you should not try to take on three guys before hitting a shot. Instead, pass the ball and get into a place where you can help the team and then when there's an opportunity for a cross or a free kick that you can get onto, use that heading technique that's part of your skill set. It may seem obvious, but sometimes when we're under pressure and we're nervous, we'll try to do things that we're thinking about in our head that aren't necessarily part of our game. Maybe I spent a lot of time watching videos of Neymar doing fancy skill moves, and now I'm trying to do that instead of playing a one-touch pass. If I'm a center midfielder and my game is based around awareness and playing simple, then use that as your strength. Now number five is probably the hardest for most players out of these five main ideas. And number five is do not hide. What I mean by do not hide is make sure that not only you're doing these first four things, but do something extra that makes you stand out as it relates to your game. One really easy thing to do is communicate and demand the ball. Especially if you're an attacking player, you need to show the coaches that you want the ball at your feet. There's nothing worse than when a player is wide open on the opposite side and they don't call for the ball. That tells the coaches that you don't really want the ball because you're too nervous or afraid to make a mistake. Even if you mess up the dribble or control once in a while, the coach is going to be impressed that you're demanding that ball to help the team succeed. That's going to showcase your confidence and that's gonna give the coach confidence in you if they wanted to put you on the field. Looking back at my opportunity to try out an NJIT the first time around during my first semester, again, the team was already full, so in order to break through into that roster, I would have had to been something special. It would have had to been obvious to the coach that not only was I good enough to be on the team, but I was good enough to start and contribute a positive impact right away. That would have been the only way for me to have a chance at getting on that team. But looking back at these five main ideas, there were definitely some of these that I did not do well enough during that session. I was definitely on time and I was ready to go. I'm a player who's always tuned in and really paying attention. I always hustle, I try my hardest, and I commit to focusing on that next play. Anytime I make a mistake, I just track back towards the goal and see if I can help my team win the ball again. Now where I let myself down a little bit is I was not as efficient and effective as I could have been. And the other thing that I did not do well enough is I did not do enough to stand out and demand the ball. I hid a little bit too much. So those two main things were things that I worked on during the winter and going into the next spring to prepare myself for my next opportunity. All right, so we went over those five basic concepts Pretty logical, right? Show up, be on time and ready. Hustle, work hard, focus on the next play. Be efficient and effective. Stand out, don't hide, and showcase your strength. But now it's time to look at five things that not many players do that will give you a better advantage. When you get to higher and higher levels of play, everyone is fast. When you get to higher levels of play, everyone has good technique. Everyone can kick a ball really hard. So when you're playing for elite teams, you're trying to play in college, or you're trying to go pro, you really need to have a specific strength that makes you stand out from the rest that can be an asset to the team. And beyond that, we need to do little things to make sure that the coaches remember us because you might be going to a showcase or an ID clinic where there's 150 players. And if you're not one of the players that the coaches are already recruiting, you need to be doing something really creative to stand out and make sure at the very least that they remember that you were there. That will help them at least look at you and watch your playing to see if you'd be a good fit. 
So number one on our secret list is do something unique and creative that makes you stand out. For me, that was being really good at freestyle. So anytime we were on the side warming up or taking a break was an opportunity for me to do a bunch of fancy flicks, juggles, and skills that demonstrated that I had an extremely high level control of the ball that other players did not have. Now freestyle soccer doesn't necessarily translate to playing on the field, but it absolutely makes me stand out because the coach will immediately remember after the session of the tryout that, hey, who was that guy, who was that kid, who was that player that was doing all those crazy skills and tricks? What number? Okay, that was, that was DJ. Okay, wow, put him down. We'll take another look at him. Something really specific that makes you stand out. Now maybe it's not fancy skills and tricks on the sideline, but maybe you wear really bright socks. Now this may sound silly, but it's gonna be easy for that coach to pick you out of the crowd because they're gonna say, if they forget your name, they're just gonna say, that was the kid who was wearing the yellow socks. Maybe you're a striker and you score lots of goals. So one, make sure you show your strength and score those goals. And then maybe two, the creative way to stand out is have a really fun, interesting celebration that the coaches and the scouts are not gonna forget. So not only did you score a goal, but you gave them something memorable so that they remember you were the one scoring the goals and not somebody else. Now, number two, this is where we get a little bit more specific into things that a lot of players don't do. Number two is do your homework. If you're trying out for a specific team and you know how to get information about that team, go look it up. I was trying out for NJIT and what I did not do the first time around is I did not look up and figure out where they needed help the most. I could have recognized that they really needed help at the forward position and I could have put myself in a situation if I'm good enough at forward to put myself in that position and stand out as a forward. So that way, not only am I trying to showcase my strengths, but I know that the coach is looking for a forward. He's not looking for a center back. So by putting myself in that position at the tryout, I give myself a better chance at getting on the team. You can also do some research on the coach of the team. Find out how they like to coach, their style of play, where they've coached in the past. Do they like really big, tall, athletic players? Or do they like smaller, more technical players? These little subtleties will help you recognize the best way that you can showcase your talents to that specific coach or specific scout to stand out, make them remember you, and also show that you could be an asset to their specific team. Number three is always be tuned in. Very similar to our second point on the first half, which was hustle and focus on the next play. So no matter what, I'm working really hard and no matter what mistakes I make or my team makes, I'm working on helping the team immediately. But always tuned in means no slip of focus. So anytime that ball is going out of bounds, I'm dialed in, I'm ready to go. It's not just about what is happening when you're on the ball, it's also what's happening when you're on the other side of the field. Don't just focus on your movement on and off the ball when you're close to the ball, Focus on what you're doing when you're far away from the ball. If you're a center back and the ball is at your striker's feet, make sure you're scanning. Make sure you're holding the right line. Should you be pushing the team up higher or do you wanna be stretched and more spread out to create depth? Should you be stretched wide or do you want your teammates to be pinched in? Communicating and demonstrating those little details are gonna show the coach that you're tuned in and that you're really meant to play that position. Now, number four is something that I really struggled with that I changed when I went to my second tryout. Number four is be brave and aggressive. Now, I'm a smaller player. I like to have the ball on my feet and be technical. I'm not a player who loves to go hard shoulder to shoulder and knock into people. And so that's when, when I was trying to play for the division one level, you had guys who are a lot bigger, stronger, faster, and just much more physical. When you're moving up to higher levels of play, trying to play for elite teams, college and pro levels, the players are gonna be faster and stronger, and they're just straight up gonna be more physical. When they go shoulder to shoulder, it's not a light little graze, it's a huge bump where they might even knock you over, but if they do it correctly, it won't even be a foul. So when these situations come up, be brave. Do not shy away from these challenges. It might be a 50-50 where you're gonna go for a tackle. Don't shy away like this. Don't stick your leg in halfway. Go through the ball. 
Maybe the ball's up in the air. Don't be timid and not go up. Go up and try to challenge that opponent to win that header. Maybe you're running down the end line and you're closing someone down and there's an opportunity to go shoulder to shoulder. Really get into them with that shoulder rather than just keeping your distance or gently putting an arm up. Be brave and be aggressive. Number five is something that you must do no matter what, whether you make the team or don't, whether you're trying out for a local youth club or you're trying out for a professional team. Number five is have fun. We play this sport because we love it and we're passionate about it. And if we lose that passion, we lose that fun, then it becomes work. And once it becomes work, it's really hard for us to stay motivated to continue playing. So make sure you have fun when you're playing and when you're trying out. This can be sharing a laugh during a water break or celebrating really intently after your team scores a goal. Show those coaches that you're fun to be around and that it'd be good to have you on the team for the team's morale because it's not just about what happens on the field, it's also about how things are off the field, in the locker room, on campus, away from the game, and how the team gels together. So if you can be someone who's more fun to be around, that's gonna help the environment for the team to be more happy and successful. Looking back at these five advanced tips, I kind of look at these and I think to myself, wow, I definitely got more into these advanced tips and that helped me get onto the team after my second tryout. One big thing was that I was more physical and aggressive during my play. The other thing was I made sure to have more fun. I made sure that I was high-fiving my teammates. I made sure that I was smiling and just happy to be there, whether I was gonna make that team or not. It's really important to show that you love the game. And looking back at these, and I'm just glancing here because I have my notes written down, but I really did my homework about the team. At the time, there was a new coach that came in and so I was looking up how many players he might have that he was recruiting, and I realized that I could definitely stand out if I was fit and I was a little bit more of a creative player rather than just being an athlete. And so I used that to my advantage. I played during the scrimmage at attacking center mid, and I just made a lot of plays with the ball to stand out. Since I knew the coach was new, I knew that he might need to move players around to fit his specific style. And so because of that, during the tryout, I switched my position to center back to show that I had versatility, that not only could I play higher, but I could play in the back and showcase leadership and game management as well. This indicated to the coach that I could be a key asset, especially during practices, that if he needed someone to play center back, that he could plug me in. If he needed a center mid, he could plug me in. If he needed someone to go on the right, he could plug me in to help the team improve during training. And last but not least, what really made me stand out was my freestyle. So I had opportunities during, before the session, during water breaks, um, to really just spend a few minutes each time just doing around the worlds, doing skills, controlling the ball on my neck or my head. And this is just something that catches your eye right away and the coach remembered me. And what exactly happened was a few days after the tryout, I was just out on the field um, and I brought out a ball and I was just juggling and doing some of my tricks, popping the ball up really high, controlling it, continuing my juggle without making mistakes or dropping the ball. And little did I know that the coach from the team was actually jogging around the other side of the track. And I didn't even realize he was there, so I just kept doing my thing and was showcasing some skills. And then I noticed that someone was walking towards me from the corner of the track. And so I didn't think much of it. I kept doing my thing, and then they started getting closer. I'm like, oh, this, this guy's coming up to me. If, you know, I wonder what they're gonna say, or like, you know, if they wanna pass the ball or something. And then as they got halfway, I realized that it was the school coach. And so then I was a little bit nervous. I was like, oh man, he's coming up to me. Um, and he finally came up to me and he told me straight up, he was like, look, you know, I saw you during the session, during the tryout, you know, I thought it was okay. He's like, to be honest, I thought you could have showed a little bit better um, during the game. And he goes, and by the way, why did you switch from center mid to center back. You were playing center mid, he's like, you were playing pretty well. And then we came out to play again and you were at center back and I was a little bit confused. And this was the opportunity that I almost was waiting for because I was able to say, hey, well, I actually played center back in high school and I just wanted to showcase that you could put me in different positions and I could perform well. And he goes, oh, well, all right, well, that makes sense, pretty cool. 
He goes, you know, I've been going back and forth about it, but I saw you over here juggling and doing some of those skills and stuff. And, you know, I, I, I want to bring you onto the team. And I was blown away. I always look back at that moment and I say to myself, wow, like I was really lucky and I'm really happy that I had those skills and tricks to stand out and help this coach remember me because I could have been out there dribbling on the ground and he might not have recognized me. But because I was doing those same tricks, he saw me from 100 yards away and realized that the person doing those tricks must have been the same guy who was doing them at the tryouts. And he came up to me and invited me on the team. So obviously quite a bit of luck, but also doing those skills helped that coach remember that I was a good player. And because of that, I got onto this team and I fulfilled my goal of playing Division I soccer. So to review, make sure you're on time and make sure you're always ready to go. Number two, hustle and focus on the next play no matter what. Number three, be efficient and effective rather than flashy and fancy. Number four, showcase your strengths. And number five, don't hide. Make sure that you stand out, communicate, and demand the ball. And then from our secret list, make sure that you find a unique way to stand out so those coaches and scouts remember you. Number two, do your homework on the team, on the club, on the coaches, even on the players, so that you know exactly the best way to showcase your strengths and fit into their roster. Three, always be tuned in, no matter where you are on the field, no matter what position, what minute of the match, where the ball is, always be tuned in. Number four, be brave and aggressive. Don't shy away from any challenges. Show your coach that you're ready to fight for the team, no matter what. Number five is have fun. Bonus tips. Now you might think it'd be good to get new cleats for your tryouts, but I definitely recommend making sure that you have a good amount of time to break your shoes in and get comfortable in them, wear them a little bit before jumping in to a new tryout. So if you get a new pair of some super flies or some predators, come in, try them on, make sure you get a good fit here at Soccer Zone USA, or you can order from our website, but make sure you have a good couple weeks to break those shoes in. Some of these newer shoes, like I've been wearing the Nemesis, really don't need to be broken in at all. They're really soft, they have a good upper, I have really good control, my feet are really comfortable in them, they have good lockdown, but I still wanna make sure that I get used to wearing those shoes over the shoes that I used to be wearing. If you don't have that kind of time, stick to the older shoes that you have, that you trust and can depend on. Show those coaches that you're ready to go for the next session or the next game by going up to them at the end of the tryout and saying thank you and tell them something that you liked about the tryout and just be grateful for the opportunity. That way it's going to give them another moment to see you, remember you, and think about you if you're going to be a good fit for their squad. So now we've gone through our five main tips, our five secret tips, and a bonus tip there are other things that you can do to stand out a little bit here and there, depending on your specific style of play, the position that you're playing, what level of teams that you're playing on, etc. So if you have any more questions, just send us a message, an email, call us, or write a message in the comments below so we can try to help you out. Thanks so much for being here with us at Soccer Zone USA. Click below to go to our website and shop all our new items so that you're prepared and ready with all your gear for your next tryout. I'm DJ Divini, we'll see you next time.